Okay, hey you guys. I'm gonna have a fun video here. This should be short and sweet somewhat, but uh, it might get a little bit deep for you guys actually because I'm gonna talk in depth about these colors that I chose for this uh, quarter's paint dots. And the reason why I chose these paint dots or these new paint colors to show you originally was when I did that horse silhouette sky exercise, I wouldn't call it really a painting, it was more of an exercise, learning exercise, I discovered something which I knew before but I just hadn't really played with this concept and that's the concept of diffusion. And what happened was I painted the sky usually with ultramarine blue but then I did a little experiment and used a phthalo blue which I usually tell you guys I do not recommend phthalo blues especially for beginners, they're staining, they're hard to control. But one of the fun things about phthalo blue is how it explodes on to the paper. And I saw, and I was painting the sky and the very first brush full of phthalo blue I put onto the paper just exploded beautifully. So I was like, oh, I wanna get some more of, the, some more of these exploding watercolors. Uh, in technical watercolor terms, that's called diffusion. How much a paint explodes across the paper when the whole paper is wet, how much it explodes and spreads out into the paper. So phthalo blue is, a, I looked it up for that particular phthalo blue, it wasn't as high as some of them. So it'll be fun to look at these and see if they explode. Uh, on handprint.com, especially this French vermilion, I've got them swatched out already here. This is the French vermilion that I'm including on the paint knot. It's supposed to really explode. It has a rating of four and the rating goes from one to four, four being the highest. And uh, I, I looked up the pigment. By the way, when you're doing your pigment research for what colors you wanna buy, especially on handprint.com, a lot of his information is old, so you have to make sure you're actually researching the correct pigment and make sure that the manufacturer hasn't changed what pigment they put in a particularly named um, color. Like this is Sennelier French Vermilion and they could very easily continue to release French Vermilion but change the actual pigment. On this tube it's actually pretty easy to find. It says pigment PR242 and for most of these paint colors, you really have to put your glasses on to read it. So PR244 diffuses has a rating of four. So that's why I bought these, all of these colors. I think even the cerulean has a good diffusion. Yes, it did. Now I remember, yes. Even cerulean, which I'm surprised because it's granulating. I didn't think granulating paints would explode on the paper, but we'll see. Um, maybe we should do some exploding experiments. You guys want to? <laughs> I think that would be fun. So when I first bought these, I swatched them out already. So here they are. This is French Vermilion. This is my antique turquoise that I'm still trying to find a replacement for. And look how electric blue it is compared to these other blues. They just dull down. And unfortunately, when I, another reason why I bought these blues is I was trying to find a replacement for antique turquoise, which I believe is PB17. And no watercolor manufacturers use PB17 anymore. I cannot find it. Uh, I even, this weekend, I uh, contacted one of these um, Etsy sellers who hand make paints and he said it's hard to get. So maybe that's why they're not using it anymore. It's so sad though, because look how electric blue it stays after it dries and that's called a drying shift. These look bright when you first paint them, but then they have a drying shift and they gray down, they dull down, they have a big drying shift. Uh, the PB-17, this is, was antique turquoise, Holbein antique turquoise, and before that it used to be called Holbein Peacock. It has a very small drying shift. It stays bright and vivid and highly saturated looking. It has a lot of chroma in technical terms. I was bummed. I just, I still have not found my electric blue, but... Let's uh, let's see how these explode on the paper. So let's talk about each one and try to be a little organized. I, I don't, I'm not an organized thinker. I, I, I bounce around, so sorry. <laughs> but let's try this uh, Sennelier French Vermilion and uh, let's read about it a little bit. Uh, on handprint.com, 
it says that Sennelier is the only manufacturer that uses this pigment, PR242. And I did check to see, are we talking about the same pigment still? Yes, they haven't changed that since Handprint reviewed this, so it's still accurate information on Handprint. And um, it's called DeSazzo Scarlet. It's a very light, fast, semi-transparent, heavily staining. So keep that in mind. It's heavily staining. You can't use my scrub techniques as well with heavily staining paint. Moder moderately dark value, very intense orange red. So if it's orange red, that means it has a lot of yellow. So that would make you think that it will not mix well with blue, right? Well, even handprint.com says this is not a good color for mixing, but I would disagree. And if you look at my mixing, um, when I mixed three different triads to show how to mix lots of colors from just three colors, I tried it with French Vermilion and I got beautiful greens and beautiful purples. So I was surprised because I thought when you added a blue to this yellow red, it would just be um, dull and ugly, which it wasn't. The color that surprised me that made a gray when it mixed, I believe it was with red, was a thallow blue made a gray, but anyway. Okay, so let's read more about Sennelier French Vermilion. It's the only com commercial source of this color. It's very active, wet and wet. It's a beautiful, intense scarlet pigment, slightly redder and darker than naphthol scarlet, and very reliable. It has limited mixing potential. I do not agree. I think it mixes beautifully. It's worth more as a pure color. Let's play with it a little bit. Let's see how if it explodes on the paper. I'm going to give it a good area to explode into. Then I'm just going to get it right off the paper just like you guys would on your paint dots. I hope you guys enjoy this color and at least have a little bit of fun with it. If it explodes, it might be a fun color to use with a thalo, actually because thalo will gray down with it but it'll explode on the paper maybe and be fun to be a sunset color because it's an orange red. So let's touch it to the paper. It's not exploding that much to me. When you touch this thalo blue that I was talking about, it just poof, it explodes. I'll try to show you guys. All right, let's add some primary blue to it from what I'm giving you guys as a paint out. And this, this this primary blue by Mamera, Mamera blue, I'm probably butchering that. Um, it's so beautiful. Look how, now that exploded. Do you see how that exploded? Let's see if it mixes. So you would think since this is such an orange red, it would, it would really dull down the purple, but that's a pretty good purple. All right, so since we've got some primary blue on here. Let's go ahead and talk about Mamera Blue primary blue and why I chose it because it has a high diffusion rating too. So that's why I bought it one because it has a lot of diffusion and I wanted to play with that. And two, it looks a lot like the electric blue, um, at least when it's wet. See, see now that's really exploding. Do you see how it explodes almost like a firework out into the paper? That's exploding more than that Sennelier did. See, look how it's moving down. I'm not having to move it at all. It just moves right down the paper. And it's so pretty when it's wet, but then it, it dries down to this duller color. All right, so let's read about primary blue. All right, I'm having to go backwards a little bit because I lost the footage where I uh, told you guys what handprint had to say about primary blue. Primary blue, uh, its main pigment, we can look on the side here and see it's PB15 colon 3, a thalo. So uh, this is probably going to be heavily staining. Let's see what else handprint.com has to say about it. It's a workhorse industrial blue colorant, light, fast, transparent, strong, transparent, strongly staining. So keep that in mind when you're painting with it, you won't be able to use a scrubbing technique much. Very dark valued. It's excellent with light fatness, fastness. And by the way, all these colors that I'm including in this quarter's 
paint dots are very light fast. So you can definitely use these in paintings and not worry that it's going to fade. Um, it does have a very large drawing shift, which we can see that how much it's, um, actually this is the blue, how much it grayed down after it dried. It says it lightens quite a bit and loses about 20% or more in saturation. It differs significantly across manufacturers. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, just because it has the same pigment, pigment in it doesn't mean that it will react the same on paper. Uh, different manufacturers put different things in their paint mixtures and that really affects how the paint behaves on paper. I chose this primary blue because it had a lot of diffusion. It explodes on the paper a lot. So that's why I chose this particular turquoise. So this says it has a really good dark tinting strength. So that means that this would make a good color to use when you're mixing darks and blacks. It's a beautiful sky color in dilute washes. It mixes well with a wide range of paints, including cadmiums. So there you have it, primary blue. Okay, let's move on to Mamera Blue Verde Turkis, Turkis. Is that Italian? Yeah, made in Italy. Interesting. These are made in Italy, but this is a uh, turquoise green in English. And it's made with PB36, a uh, thalo. This is also a thalo blue. And this is what it looks like, and it does have a drying shift. It grays down a bit. Compare, you can compare it to this uh, antique turquoise that is discontinued, how bright this is compared to these grays, gray or gray or blues. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how this dries when it's uh, more wet. Uh, according to handprint.com, when you uh, add a lot of water to them, they have less of a chroma shift. They have less of, less of a drying shift. So we'll see. All right, so let's read up on turquoise blue PB16. And PB17, by the way, is what they used to use to make antique turquoise. So these are all kind of closely related. Okay, so PB16 is a light, fast, semi-transparent, heavily staining, which always alerts me. Uh, it has a rating of three for diffusion, so not as much, but still a good bit of diffusing. Yeah, it, it goes undergoes a very large drying shift, lightening by 20% and losing 30% of saturation, and I agree with that. Like other thallos, its chroma greatly increases as it is diluted. So in English, that means when you add a lot of water to it, the it looks more intense. It doesn't lose as much, much saturation. So it'll be fun to see how much grayer these look after they dry. Mamera blue turquoise green is the most chromatic, lightest valued, least staining, and most transparent it was also the most light fast. So those are all good news for Mamera Blue, which is interesting that all these paints use the same basic pigment, but because of whatever other binding agents they add and whatever other things they add to make paint, it changes how they react on paper, how light fast they are, um, how much drawing shift, et cetera, they experience. It says you can mix it with an ultramarine blue for some really celestial dark, so uh, like a dark, moody, star-filled sky maybe, or even dark spots on a cat. This would work well uh, mixed with your ultramarine blue. So try that when you get it. Uh, you probably have ultramarine blue if you've been following me for a while because that is my core, one of my core, that's my core blue. That's my number one blue is ultramarine blue. So let's see how it explodes onto the page. I'm going to wet this corner trying to keep a corner for each color. This has a rating of three, I believe, for diffusion. Turquoise green, gosh, look how pretty it is when it's wet. I hate that it grays down. It would be so pretty if it would just stay that bright, but that's okay. Wow, that's really exploding. Look at that explode. That's fun, isn't it? It, ex it, ex it does diffuse nicely. All right, shall we move on to our last one, cerulean blue. Cerulean blue is typically considered an earth color. And the main characteristic that defines what an earth color is, in my mind, is that they tend to be grayer 
And look how much grayer these are. This cerulean is compared to these other very bright paints comparatively. And that actually serves a good purpose of being something that you can add to other colors to gray them down and make them look more natural. And also this Daniel Smith is very beautifully granulating. So that's another thing uh, to enjoy about this cerulean blue. So this would make a very nice delicate background sky color or just a background color in general because it is gray, but it's also still very beautiful because the granulation really. Okay, so the pigment is PB36. Let's look up PB36 on handprint. This is cobalt tin oxide. No, 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 that's PB35. This is cobalt chromium oxide, PB36. Does anyone know the difference between? The light, fat, light fastness of this pigment is rated as excellent often a very small drawing shift. And he's saying that across paint manufacturers, this cerulean has different colors. It can be more green or more red, depending on what paint brand you go with. Now this is Daniel Smith, and it says it's an interesting color situated exactly between the clusters of cerulean and turquoise paints. The tinting strength is weak, which we uh, most most ceruleans are not used to make dark mixes. They, they're not dark blues. So that's what he means. It's not uh, the tinting strength is how dark can you get your mix with it? Not very dark at all with this one. Same, that's, that's the same is true with cobalt blue. The reason why I chose this cerulean is because it had the highest diffusion rating of all the ceruleans. So let's look and see how it diffuses because I really wanted to figure out some sort of exercise where we could play with diffusion. And that that um, tutorial that I already did actually probably would be a good one because that was a sky. I actually do have another painting that I have done before that I could do with you guys of a deer in a misty forest and everything's diffused and that would be a good one because it has a lot of reds and blues. Uh, actually oranges and purples mostly, which you could mix very easily with these colors. That would be a good tutorial. All right, let's see how it diffuses. Not as dramatic to me, but it is diffusing. It is exploding a little bit, but not anything like these two colors especially. Those are the four colors. If you watch this video and you have not gotten paint dots and you decide you want me to send you this set of paint dots, that uh, would be fine. Just up your tier level to the $13 tier. If you're an international student, it would be the $18 tier. I was kind of putting off sending out these paint dots, but I actually really enjoyed, it felt like a different way of connecting with you guys. So I really enjoyed putting these paint dots together and sending you guys out little letters in the mail. It's just um, like an old fashioned way of connecting and it felt good actually with, especially the state of things today. <laughs> I am one of those who stay home and I stay safe. So it felt like a great, a more intimate way to reach out to you guys and just be in contact. So I really enjoyed sending these paint dots out and I hope you guys enjoy receiving them. And if anyone wants paint dots, send me a note. If I missed you and did not get you your paint dot, definitely message me. It doesn't bother me when you guys message me at all anyway. And my Patreon has gotten to the point where I'm making enough where I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, where I can change over from really depending on commissions for my income to depending on my Patreon for income, which will mean that I will be able to spend a lot more time on my Patreon and a lot more time on painting things that just I like or what really inspire me. And I couldn't do that without you guys. So thank you guys so much. I don't know if you guys know the history of Patreon, but it was originally created just to be a vehicle for, for artists to allow people to just support them because they love them. So I feel like some of you really uh, get into that Patreon spirit and support me just because you love me and I appreciate it so much. And it really, it literally is what helps me change my focus from commission portraits to painting just what I like as an artist. And really, that's going to help me grow as an artist. So thank you so much for going on that journey with me. It means the absolute world to me, and I'm so humbled by it. I can't 
believe that I get to do this for a living. And I feel like as my Patreon grows, it's really going to be something that I can call my career. As my son starts going to school full time, I there is pressure from certain people in my family who I love. <laughs> but, you know, if I'm not making a certain amount of income, they're going to be like, you should go back and get a real job. So as a thank you to one of my longtime supporters who have been with me even before 2018 when I started my Patreon. I'm going to send her this original because I asked her if she wanted a print. She said she wanted a print of this tree. So I'm going to send her the original as a surprise instead. And I'll stop rambling now. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.